Imagine an island so harsh that they didn't even bother using it as a prison, a place where ordinary house cats turned into super predators and innocent rabbits became ecological weapons of mass destruction. What if I told you this story really happened? And believe me, the ending will definitely surprise you. This is Macquarie Island, an uninhabited piece of land covering 49 square miles, lost between Australia and Antarctica. It was discovered in 1810, and conditions there proved so brutal that authorities even abandoned the idea of creating a penal colony there. The only ones interested in this place were seal hunters, and although hunting conditions were simply hellish and nobody liked going there, the money that could be made from marine mammal blubber remained an excellent incentive. After all, seal oil was valued its weight in gold. It lit the streets of the world's largest cities. So, everything happened exactly as usually occurred when Europeans arrived in places where animals had no natural predators. By 1919, seals were on the brink of complete extinction, and with them, penguins were disappearing. Hunting was ruthless, not only of mammals, but birds as well. But the hunters didn't come to the island alone. Aboard their ships traveled stowaways in the form of rats and mice, who found the island very much to their liking. Here there were plenty of birds and absolutely no predators capable of stopping the rodents. Imagine petrels that had spent millions of years developing perfect protection against local predators. They nested in underground burrows and only appeared on the surface at night. An excellent strategy against predatory birds, but completely useless against rats. Rats, as it turned out, eat practically everything they encounter. They hunted chicks, devoured seabird eggs, even killed adult birds. Blue petrels were forced to breed only on inaccessible coastal cliffs. But rats weren't limited to just animal food. They also ate flowers, seeds, fruits, and young plant shoots, significantly reducing the number of seedlings. People in the 19th century might not have paid attention to such ecological details if rats hadn't begun causing inconvenience to them personally. Hunters lived on the island and brought supplies with them, and the rodents were very happy about this. Why search for food outside when you can climb into a house and eat in comfort? And who can deal with mice and rats better than cats? They were brought to the island, expecting them to protect food supplies from pests. There's a version that cats got there by accident, sneaking onto a ship. But the main thing is, they arrived around the beginning of the 19th century and created a real revolution in the local ecosystem. About 60 years later, rabbits appeared on the island as part of the maritime tradition of leaving animals on islands for hypothetical shipwreck victims. Rabbits arrived in 1878, and what usually happens when some number of rabbits finds itself free-ranging without predators occurred. Rabbits began multiplying like, well, like rabbits. They ate the vegetation that hid and protected albatross nests, making the birds vulnerable to squaw attacks. Rabbits eat as actively as they reproduce, that is very much. Green slopes turned into bare earth. Instead of usual vegetation, a weed called poa annua appeared. Bare patches became like neatly trimmed golf courses. Rabbits led to serious soil erosion and cliff collapses, destroying seabird nests. They ate not only leaves, but also flowers, sprouts, and root systems, leading to the final death of plants. In September 2006, a major landslide occurred in Lusitania Bay, covering about 5,400 square feet which partially destroyed an important penguin colony. Meanwhile, cats hunted rats, but when rabbits appeared, much easier prey, the predators pounced on them with doubled force. From such a luxurious diet, cat numbers began growing rapidly, but rabbits weren't falling behind either. By 1968, the rabbit population exceeded 100,000 individuals. In an attempt to destroy the rabbits, authorities introduced the deadly myxomatosis virus in the late 60s. The strategy worked. By the 80s, the population had shrunk to fewer than 20,000 individuals. But cats, having lost their main food source, switched to seabirds and began killing 60,000 birds per year. Scientists had sounded the alarm back in the 50s, but real action began only several decades later. Starting in 1985, cat extermination began through shooting. By June 2000, the last of almost 2,500 cats had been killed. But without predators, the rabbit population exploded again. At peak numbers, there were about 300,000 individuals, plus many rats and house mice. Rabbits ate approximately 40% of the island's vegetation, creating an ecosystem crisis greater than the cat problem. 
On June 4, 2007, the Australian and Tasmanian governments announced joint funding of a $15 million program to eradicate all invasive species. By 2009, the island housed 130,000 rabbits, 36,000 rats, and 103,000 mice. The program represented a multi-targeted attack, shooting, spreading poisoned bait from helicopters, hunting dogs, and calicivirus. The first stage was spreading virus-infected grated carrots and nighttime rabbit trapping. Then came the turn of massive aerial attack. Helicopters scattered 300 tons of green pellets of poison bait across the entire island. After aerial poisoning, they sent 12 tracking dogs and a team of hunters. Calicivirus significantly reduced numbers, and ground extermination took only seven months instead of the planned three years. Dogs played a key role in the operation. They covered more than 56,000 miles searching for surviving rabbits in harsh subantarctic conditions. Breeds were chosen deliberately. Springer Spaniels, Labradors, and Terriers handle cold, wet climate well. In February 2012, rabbits, rats, and mice were almost completely exterminated. On April 8, 2014, Macquarie Island was officially declared pest-free after seven years of effort. Results exceeded all expectations. Many bird species populations began recovering almost immediately. The white-headed petrel, close to extinction in 2001, showed significant growth. The southern gray petrel and blue petrel, extinct since the 1900s, returned and are increasing by 10% annually. Today, there are more native animals on the island than in the last 150 years. Birds are returning to breed. Their droppings add nutrients to the soil, helping plants recover, but complete restoration will require 30 to 50 years. The Macquarie story is a lesson to humanity about how important it is to treat ecosystems responsibly. After all, attempts to fix the situation for a long time only made it worse. Until next time.